Hello and welcome to Dialogue. From the world's largest high-speed rail network to groundbreaking space exploration and AI innovation, China has achieved a series of breakthroughs over the past decades and become a global major tech power. So how are China's tech advancements reshaping people's lives and international cooperation? What's next for China's technological future? And what does it mean for the world? Join us for our discussion today from Beijing. I'm Xu Qinduo. Joining me first is Shabazz Han, Director of UNESCO Regional Office for East Asia. Welcome to Dialogue, Dr. Han. Uh, we know that uh, you know, UNESCO, your office, is representing basically the area of not only China, but also South Korea, Japan, and Mongolia. So tell us, for people who are not familiar with UNESCO's work, give us a brief, brief introduction of your office. Uh, what is it about? Uh, this office is UNESCO's regional office for East Asia. As you know, UNESCO is about education, it's about science, it's about culture, also very importantly, communication and information and social and human sciences. So this office is serving China, very important member state of UNESCO, Japan, uh, South Korea, North Korea, and Mongolia. So we have all the areas of UNESCO we are working on, but of course, uh, UNESCO is not just uh, this office, we have uh, uh, more than 50 offices around the world and our headquarters in Paris and we are working together uh, with the Chinese government to offer all these areas of uh, mandate of UNESCO and uh, also working with a number of other countries for South-South and North-South and Triangular cooperation. Uh, well, late last year, UNESCO established a, a Category 1 Institute of STEM Education in Shanghai. You know, uh, that is the first Category 1 Institute uh, for UNESCO in China, and also the first one outside Europe. So tell us more about that, uh, you know, what is it about and why in Shanghai? Um, this would be the first of its uh, kind Category 1 Institute. Category 1 Institute is a very special uh, institute in UNESCO and the first one in China and the first one of its kind in the world about science, technology, engineering and mathematics. Because science, technology, engineering and mathematics are the important areas for the world to bring the next level of development. As we have been discussing whether it's communication, whether it's uh, 5G or whether it's a high speed rail or whether it is uh, food security or whether it's genetic engineering or whether it's artificial intelligence, all of them depend on our ability to progress uh, STEM fields and bring uh, the best among uh, the children on what they can do. So I've been to Shanghai and I visited this uh, very important um, site which has been offered by the Shanghai government, the Chinese government where this institute would be. Shanghai is a wonderful city which has uh, so much to offer for artificial intelligence, so much to offer for science and technology. It has wonderful universities like Tonji University and many others. And uh, also, I saw young children um, programming drones. And not just programming yes. one drone, you know, they're programming a battery of drones. Yeah. The drones which can fly together. And of course now in China, whenever we are celebrating a day, the drones can make a wonderful sky, not for uh, destructive, but for constructive and positive uses. So this institute being uh, hosted by Shanghai as a UNESCO Category 1 Institute will be bringing the benefits of science, technology, engineering and mathematics education to countries in Africa. It will also help countries in Asia and Pacific. It will bring what is best in China to the world but also for linking with the world with China as well. This belongs to all member states of uh, UNESCO. It's a UNESCO Category 1 Institute hosted and supported by China. So that's the beauty of it. It strongly supports the South-South uh, cooperation. President Xi has given very important concept of global South and uh, also um, the values for coexistence and uh, bringing what is best in humanity. And uh, I strongly believe that this uh, institute will also help a global South. It will also help uh, bring um, various level, levels of linkages uh, from teacher support, teacher training, uh, student to student exchanges, also very importantly uh, curricular exchanges with the other countries, 
also very importantly the related areas of science and technology also bringing uh, linkages with the professional bodies like uh, the Chinese Academy of uh, Engineering uh, linking with the academies of engineering in other countries and with institutions like the Chinese Academy of Sciences, Chinese Academy of Social Sciences. So it will help bring a step change, a transformative change uh, to bring STEM education and STEM benefits to the developing countries who need such knowledge uh, to progress all the related areas for sustainable development and for bringing uh, the next level of development for those countries, but w working hand in hand with uh, uh, Chinese collaborators. And I also strongly believe that uh, children from other countries come and uh, link with Chinese children and they program together. They program robotics, they program uh, drones, they look into um, uh, green gardens, for example, together. How can we uh, grow food more? Uh, sustainably and uh, they start to understand why it's important uh, to think of uh, the global citizenship um, and how to think about uh, this shared prosperity concept uh, together and bring the next level of uh, goodwill which is so important with all the conflicts around the world. So I congratulate China for this wonderful initiative. A wonderful attitude there. Um, you mentioned about uh, you know Chinese technology, Chinese science. Of course, China is focusing on high quality development, with which concentrates basically many people would say innovation of science and technology. I um, mean, China is um, some would say already uh, you know a tech superpower there. But what does that mean? What does Chinese technology development growth mean to to the world? The technology growth from China. It means many things which we are now uh, seeing. For many countries uh, already it brings uh, um, affordable uh, goods and services. I must say uh, for, from clothing for example, from the point of view of uh, agricultural innovations for example and food security for example um, and also from trade and commerce uh, uh, linking with electrical vehicles, for example, solar panels which are affordable. All of that uh, is positive. But also there may be some apprehensions about uh, China's uh, rapid development. And, uh, uh, but that's where uh, this uh, a continuous uh, message of uh, uh, sustainable development linking with other um, countries, bringing um, science and technology and education and bringing South-South cooperation and the Belt and Road Initiative, for example, and bringing the intercultural dialogue. Uh, these are very uh, positive messages that we can have a world where we, we can have water security, where we can have food security, where we can uh, deal with the big challenges like climate change together through all renewable technology. All techno so all of them need uh, better science and technology. Yes. And this is a very positive message from China that uh, if you look into the latest uh, resolution which China um, has been a leader in the UN General Assembly about AI, how do we build capacity? How do we come over digital divides? Let us work together to create a world where there are no digital divides and where all of us know how to use artificial intelligence to the benefit of our societies. That's a very positive message. And not just a message, it is also backed with uh, um, concrete actions through better education, offering opportunities to students from Africa, from Asia, I originally come from Pakistan. I see many uh, students from Pakistan who have come. They are learning, for example, sports science. They are learning artificial intelligence. They have been uh, working with top scientists on uh, genetic engineering. Um, they are also learning in the areas of environment. So when they go back, it already brings the next level of development for countries like Pakistan. And same applies to countries like in Africa. So uh, this is important part of uh, linking uh, China with the world and build, building this uh, um, uh, community with a shared future. Uh, and I strongly believe that in our lifetimes we will be able to see this world which is a sustainable world and which is inclusive world which leaves no one behind. Yes, yes. Uh, well, with uh, advancement of technology, of course, you know, we are 
at a point, people would say, you know, with this instant availability of information and also uh, various formats of entertainment that creates kind of distraction uh, for education. So in terms of, you know, bad education, uh, how do you think we are coping with those, um, those you know, you can say uh, on one hand that's advantage, on the other hand that's challenges, right? Uh, information and entertainment. Uh, that's where we need to uh, promote what we say digital literacy, a better understanding of the social media, how it can help uh, create next levels of learning. Like with the artificial intelligence and chat GPT, for example, um, I am a user of uh, Chinese artificial intelligence uh, tool, Kimi, and is, I find it very, Kimi is a good tool, mm -hmm. especially it gives us um, uh, many ideas I want to learn, like I was in Dunhuang recently and I was looking into the Mogao caves and I was asking questions about uh, Buddhism, about Taoism, about Confucianism and what uh, uh, the tool itself has been able to bring together, you know, and uh, the caves and their culture. So if we think about the use, like as I described to you, when I'm seeing something like Mogao Caves or Beijing Central Axis, or we go to Huangcheng, for example, or we are looking into sustainability issues, um, and we use these tools to uh, help us uh, with our uh, aiding our learning, you know, and uh, then bringing the right kind of information. Uh, and But also with a, a very clear understanding that these tools can also make mistakes. Because uh, artificial intelligence uh, strongly depends on the training data sets which has been used. And it can also bring in the biases from uh, different cultures. It can bring in stereotypes. It can also bring in uh, biases uh, against gender as well. So how do we make sure that we take care of those challenges as well? And it can also bring in the biases of whose history it is and who is telling it. So those challenges are there. Parents in China have seen they are very uh, keen for their children to learn about uh, culture, learn about uh, uh, music and all of that. So there is a balance somewhere. And that balance we have to find, and every child has their own special characteristics. Yes. Every individual has their own characteristics. So parents must work very closely uh, with their children and must watch very carefully because there is a lot of content which is harmful content of uh, various types which is not suitable for children. And uh, how do we actually continue to bring uh, proper uh, digital literacy and uh, better um, learning uh, from different areas and um, in the areas of mathematics, science, engineering, in the areas of literature, in the areas of history. So this is now our biggest challenge. While it's a big blessing for this, uh, uh, this age, we are the data and AI, but it's the biggest threat as well. So we have to continue to watch it and be very, very careful yes. uh, in the safe uh, use of all these tools and technologies mm -hmm. to bring what is best uh, in humanity. Thank you, Dr. Han. Thank you for speaking to us.